All right, today's lecture is going to be on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who was a British author that wrote in the late 1800s, early 1900s. He's most well known for creating Sherlock Holmes, the famed detective who's usually pictured as he is here wearing the deerstalker, that goofy hat with the two brims, and often smoking a pipe. The pictures here are a more modern Sherlock in the front, and then the silhouette of the classical Sherlock Holmes, who's smoking the Meerschaum pipe. Arthur Conan Doyle was born to Charles and Mary Doyle. Charles was an alcoholic who was prone to erratic behavior, so much so that he was later committed to an asylum. Mary, on the other hand, was kind of the rock of the family. She kept everybody together, often by telling stories that had a huge impact on Doyle's life and on his writing later. Because Arthur's mother and, in fact, his whole family were artsy, they really expected Arthur to follow a career path that was more along those lines, just something art-related. However, because of a boarder that his mother had taken in after his father was committed to the asylum, Arthur was more interested in medicine. As a result, he enrolled in the University of Edinburgh and studied under a man named Joseph Bell. Dr. Bell was known for using deduction and logic and reasoning, and influenced Arthur enough that he later um, worked these traits into Sherlock Holmes, and in fact, his defining features came from this doctor. Now, the picture you see here is actually one that Doyle drew on graduating from medical school. Now, probably because he's a doctor, his handwriting is a little difficult to read, but there at the bottom it says, License to Kill. Unfortunately, it actually seems like Doyle was a pretty successful doctor overall. He first served on a ship that sailed between England and Africa, because he thought Africa sounded like it was exotic and it would be cool to see, but found very quickly that he did not like it. So he got off that ship pretty quickly, and instead went and worked with a doctor in Plymouth, which also ended fairly quickly. And at that point, he got a practice of his own that did pretty well. Um, at that point, however, he was so poor that he could only furnish the two rooms that the patients would see. And it was at this place, in his own practice, that he developed Sherlock Holmes and Watson. The first Sherlock Holmes story that Doyle wrote was called A Study in Scarlet. Now, these stories were never originally supposed to be serialized like they were. It was going to be this one story. And it was not supposed to be even all that serious a work. He wrote it because he needed money and because it would sell. He really wanted to be known for his more serious historical works. However, those books were and still are virtually unknown. Sherlock Holmes came to be very popular and, in fact, um, as common as he is through a series of events. The first one was that Doyle became friends with Oscar Wilde, and because of this friendship, was commissioned to write a short story. Now, he chose to write another Sherlock Holmes story, and then not long after that, he actually became very sick. And he decided the reason for that was because he was too busy. Being a doctor and an author, he just was working himself to death. So he decided to give up being a doctor and to focus on writing a series of short stories about one character, Sherlock Holmes. This was actually a novel idea. This wasn't something that was done very common. Um, it was published serially in a magazine, which means he would do one story in a new story in each magazine edition. That wasn't a com uncommon practice. Um, Charles Dickens and several other authors are known to have done their stories that way. Generally, however, those were novels, as his were short stories, and one character. Um, not long after he started writing Sherlock Holmes this way, however, he decided to go ahead and kill the detective. He really, really hated the character by this point, because you remember he wanted to be known for his historical work, not for this detective. He didn't enjoy writing him, he didn't like him, everyone else did, and I think it really chafed him. We're going to read more about that later, however. When he did kill Sherlock Holmes, it made people furious, and a lot of them cancelled their subscriptions to the magazine that he was publishing in, 
out of protest. One of the biggest, at least politically, fans of Sherlock Holmes was actually the king, Edward VIII. Now, I don't know whether he had a subscription to the magazine or whether he cancelled it, but he did read and really, really enjoy Sherlock Holmes. Now, in 1902, he knighted Arthur Conan Doyle, and there is some speculation that he might have done this to encourage Doyle to write more Sherlock Holmes stories. Whether or not that was the uh, reasoning behind it, Doyle did actually go back to writing Sherlock Holmes only a year later, when he wrote the return of Sherlock Holmes, and it's revealed that he didn't actually die in that story we were just talking about. Back to Doyle's personal life. He was married for 21 years to a woman named Louisa from 1885 to her death in 1906. She was described by Doyle as gentle and amiable, which isn't exactly the passion-filled romantic poetry we might have expected. However, it obviously seems to have worked for them. Not long after Sherlock died, she was diagnosed with tuberculosis and given a few months to live. Now, because Doyle was a doctor, he was able to give her the proper care, and she actually lived for several years after that. At some point during her illness, Doyle saw and fell in love with a woman named Jean Leckie. He remained celibate, so they weren't having an affair, but he did see her. Um, after his wife died, Doyle waited a year and then married Jean Leckie. He was described as beautiful, intelligent, she was a sportswoman and a mezzo-soprano, and in fact, she sounds a lot like Irene Adler. However, he didn't meet Leckie until 1897, and uh, Scandal and Bohemia was published in 1891, so they could not be, uh, they could not be the same woman. Irene Adler was not based off this woman. They just are oddly similar. Apart from being a really skilled doctor and a well-known author, Doyle was really just a very intelligent man. He actually saw war with Germany coming long before World War I started. He also saw the potential for a submarine blockade, despite the fact that submarines and airplanes were still really new technology. Now, of course, because England is an island, a submarine blockade is really bad news. And he thought the only solution would be to dig a tunnel between England and France under the channel. At the time, he was laughed at. However, there is now a tunnel between England and France that goes underneath the channel. He also had ideas for inflatable safety devices, um, vests and belts and rafts, as well as body armor. Generally, he was probably seen by the higher-ups as being more of an irritant than anything, because he kept coming up and proposing these ideas, and they either thought he was crazy or just didn't want to deal with it right now. There was one official, however, who wrote him with a personal thank you letter, and that was actually Churchill, who was the man in World War II. Toward the end of his life, Doyle got really involved in spiritualism and the occult. He was fascinated by the idea that there might be life after this, and in fact, that you could contact somebody who had died. Interestingly, he never tried to contact Louisa, or at the very least, there is no recorded instances of it. Now, he and Jean, his second wife, were both heavily involved in this, and they traveled the world attending seances and other such practices. Um, at that point, Doyle took mostly to writing about um, the occult and spiritualism and kind of gave up the, his other literary pursuits. He died July 7th, 1930, and his last words were whispered to his wife, and they were, You are wonderful. So we've reached the end of the lecture, and I really just wanted you to have a brief overview of Doyle and his life and some of the influences on him and on Sherlock Holmes before we started in on this unit. So, when we meet, we'll be focusing on a couple of uh, Sherlock Holmes short stories, and you'll hear more about your assignment. See you then.